Today, beavers are scrappy, hard-working animals that's with their constructed dams, are well known for being ecosystem engineers, being one of the few animals aside from ourselves, to alter and shape the environments to their liking in such a large way. When building their iconic dams, said structures have been noted to alter the paths of streams and rivers, allowing for the creation of extensive wetland habitats. They have also been observed to increase open water areas, with in some cases 160% more open water being available during droughts than in years where they are absent, as well as forming ponds that allows for the creation of new environments for different plants and animal species that could otherwise not live in said areas if beavers were not present, and as such, are an evident example of a keystone species. They are already the second largest living rodents after capybaras, although some genera got even larger than them, with one such example being the genus Castoroides. These animals lived in North America during the late Pliocene through to the Pleistocene epochs, being not just the largest known beaver currently known of, but the largest rodent known to have lived on the North American continent. The first fossils attributed to these large rodents were first discovered in a peat bog in the state of Ohio in 1837, with them being described but not named by Samuel Hildreth, which was subsequently referred to by geologist John Foster in a publication a year later, assigning the specimen to the new genus and species Castoroides ohioensis. The specimen consisted of a well-preserved skull, which although missing a mandible, facial portions and both zygomatic arches, the dental series was complete and in good condition, allowing for their assignment as some form of beaver relative. There was also the discovery of another related animal also assigned to the genus, although these animals, named C. dilophidus, were found in the southeastern regions of the US, while C. ohioensis were found across most of the continents and Canada. They differed not only in range, but differences in their premolar and molar features, a key way to distinguish mammal species. There was another species also described as C. lesiorum from Florida, although it is now regarded as invalid and is now considered to belong to C. dilophidus. These two species, while being two species of giant beavers, were not all that closely related to the modern relatives of the genus Castor. They were key examples instead of the now extinct subfamily Castoroidinae, which diverged from the lineage leading to modern beavers around 20 million years ago. They also had a large range, with them being mainly concentrated around the Midwestern United States, and especially around the Great Lakes, particularly Illinois and Indiana, although specimens have been recorded as mentioned as far south as Florida, and as far north as Canada and Alaska with the most northerly records coming from the Old Crow region of the Yukon Territory, which lies 150 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle. Overall, they were indeed deserving of their common name of giant beavers, as they were indeed massive compared to their relatives, coming in at lengths of around 2 meters and weights varying from 90 to 125 kilograms, around the size of a typical black bear. Their proportions, however, were quite different, with their hind feet being much larger than in modern beavers, while their legs were shorter overall. Their tails were also longer, and may have not have been that paddle shapes, with the vertebrae making them up being wide with flaring processes, indicating that while it was flat, it was proportionally narrower than extant beavers. Their skulls are also quite different as well, as their incisors also differed in size, as while modern beavers have incisor teeth with smooth enamel, Castoroides incisors had a striated textured surface, with them also being larger at 15 cm long, as well as being tapered to blunt, rounded points, rather than wide, sharp edges. Their cheek teeth were also noticeably different as well, and were structured more similarly to capybaras, clearly adapted for some form of grinding, with an S-shaped pattern present on the grinding surfaces. Their skull structure also indicates that they participated in extended underwater activity, with the cavity not found in other beavers being found in Castoroides, that may have assisted them in producing sounds, overall being more adapted to aquatic life than movement on land. Their brains were also quite different, as Castoroides possessed brains that were relatively small and smooth, which may indicate that they had limited interactions in their environment, and that they were not as capable of the complex behaviours exhibited by the modern counterparts like dam building. This latter point is also important in regards to their diets, as a study conducted in 2019 found that instead of consuming woody plants, instead preferred softer aquatic vegetation. This was found through analysing the isotopic signature of their teeth, which is essentially the food that becomes incorporated into their tissues and other parts of their bodies, that which includes their teeth, something that remains stable long after the death of an organism. This was indicated by the ratio of carbon-12 and 13 isotopes, which fell well outside the range expected for an animal that consumes land-based plants such as trees, 
but fell right in place with a range that suggests they were feeding mainly on aquatic plants, like pondweeds, coarse leaves, and the roots of sedges, something further backed up by their overall anatomy and the environments they've been known to live in. The shape and structure of their teeth, as mentioned, was quite different from other beavers, with the angle of them not being consistent with them being efficient at cutting trees, with the angle of protrusion of their incisors, as well as their lack of a thin, chisel-like edge making them ineffective for said use, and as such were not ecosystem engineers like their relatives. Their bodies overall were also more adapted to a more frequent aquatic lifestyle as mentioned earlier. There is also support for this with the evidence provided on where they used to exist in large numbers, with some specimens being found in sediments that consisted of pollen and plant fossils, that indicates that they preferred environments that were cold and marshy with few trees. This alongside other stated factors means they were unlikely to have constructed dams, although while there has been no conclusive evidence to say they did, there is still some debate. Branches have been found near their fossils before, with a possible lodge being discovered in Ohio around 1812, and another from a region also in the state also has claimed a possible lodge 4 feet high and 8 feet in diameter, which was formed from small saplings. Said structures may however be cases of flood deposits, or naturally occurring accretions, and the shape of their teeth would mean constructing said dams would be much more difficult. However, other members of the family Castoroidae since the Miocene epoch have been found to be tree harvesters, although Castoroides may just be the odd one out in this case, and either way, more work still needs to be done regardless. Their extinction, as with most North American megafauna, is highly debated, with there being numerous examples to list, although the two major ones are likely to be human hunting and climatic changes, or some combination of the two. One hypothesis details that as Castoroides populations were noted to have been in decline before their extinction, this 2011 paper details how nitrogen levels in the soil were declining around the same time that Castoroides numbers were also declining. This reduction in the levels of nitrogen in the soil would cause a reduction in growth and nutritional quality of plants that require high nutrient levels, and as such, animals like Castoroides would have to consume more than usual over time to maintain their health and populations, although this would result in even less nitrogen going back into the soil as leaf litter, leading to a devastating feedback loop. There have also been studies done that suggest that they declined and eventually disappeared due to the glacial retreats and the subsequent changes in their environment. It was found that they preferred cool annual temperatures and a strong growing season, which would enable them to store sufficient fat stores to survive through the coming winters. Castoroides, alongside other megafauna, did indeed inhabit areas of the Yukon and Alaska during warm periods between 200,000 to 75,000 years ago, likely doing so in periods of interglaciations when the ice sheets and glaciers receded, something which would have been much more common as their environments continued to change down south. Near the end of the Pleistocene, changing climate patterns led to higher annual temperatures overall and a seasonal shift towards high springtime precipitation that may have affected the growth of the plants available for the beavers, also tampering with the amount of time available to accumulate their fat stores. Eventually, they became restricted to south of the glaciers around the Great Lakes region from available fossil evidence around areas like Ohio and New York. The climates, as well as getting warmer, also became more arid, with much of their wetland habitat disappearing, as well as deciduous trees replacing much of the open mixed conifer forest communities. Human hunting may very well have proven a factor, although the only known instance of direct temporal and spatial overlap between human artifacts and Castoroides fossils occurs in New York State, and would have also overlapped with Paleo-Indian culture for up to a thousand years, although there is no current zooarchaeological evidence to suggest they were butchered, hunted, or wiped out by humans in a large way. The current youngest known Castoroides specimen dates to around 10,150 years ago, after which they disappear from the fossil record, ending a period of history where beavers the size of bears once roamed across the US. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals, and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.